All right, in this video, I do a lot more than just chase birds around. We go to the Smoky Mountains and we chase birds at the mountains, but we also do some landscape photography, some astrophotography. We chase some elk in this really cool valley. We explore a tiny little stream and look for some amphibians. We do all kinds of photography stuff. So come on, let's go check it out. I've left the flatlands of Florida and I'm in the mountains of North Carolina, the Smoky Mountains. In fact, check out this view, it's absolutely incredible. This is the view from the balcony of my cabin. Pretty awesome, spectacular. And I've already seen one bird I've never seen before, a yellow-billed cuckoo. And here it is, the yellow-billed cuckoo. This bird was bouncing around high in the tree right outside of the balcony, so I grabbed my camera and got a few good shots. Notice the shutter speed in the second shot. I was hand holding the 200 to 500 and still managed to get a decent shot at 1 80th of a second. The vibration reduction on this lens is really impressive. I've also got some good landscape shots of this view right here using my D810 and a really cool shot using the D500 with the 200-500. And here's the first shot from the D810 using the Sigma 50 millimeter art lens. I really like this lens. It's so sharp and it captures so much detail when paired with the D810. I used an aperture of f10 so I could get a wide field of view and capture the entire scene. I also prefer to shoot at ISO 64 on the D810. It produces such clean images at this setting. Check out those houses way out in the distance. Here, I'll highlight them so you can see them a little better. This little area is where I focused with the D500 and the 200 to 500 lens, and here's that shot. That's not exactly the best landscape lens camera combo, but I'm really impressed at the detail considering how far away this was. Right, I'm gonna do a quick view of the cabin, like a little tour. Like here's like upper balcony, goes down, there's a hot tub. Of course, just really cool woods all the way around. But like, let's go inside real quick. So this is the kitchen, pretty cool. And up here, it's down, there's a potatoes. Up here is a loft, here we'll go up to the loft real quick. There's one bedroom, uh, the bathroom, bunk beds, and then the view back out and down below where all the family is. And this, I don't ever think I've shown you this. This is my dog, this is Coda. Hi Coda, you're a good girl. So I'll go back downstairs. And I'm back down, but look, I gotta go through this dark portal to go to another section of the cabin. I guess it's three stories where there's another bed room. It goes out to the balcony and then washer and dryer, and then a game room, air hockey, and this comes back around. Oh, there's another bathroom. I think there's three bathrooms. Hey, who's that guy? <laughs> no. And then you come right back out to the balcony where the hot tub is. But check this out. The wraparound, of course, this is the bottom area. It's got all this cool stuff here. I hear a car coming. We might have visitors. This is the view. This is probably where I'll spend most of my time. Right here at this cool little fire pit. Oh my God, did you hear that? I hope that came out on video. That is a pileated woodpecker. He's out here among the trees somewhere. And like there's this path that goes down through the trees. This place is totally cool. As soon as it got dark, I was outside with my D810 and a 20 millimeter Nikkor lens. I grabbed this shot of the cabin, but I really wanted to see if I could get the Milky Way. We were pretty far out in the country, so light pollution shouldn't be a problem. And here it is. You can see the Milky Way right up through the middle of the image. These were 13 second exposures. This length of time seemed to be perfect in this location. It gave the camera enough time to soak up a lot of light from every single star in the sky. I'm no expert on naming the stars, but down in the bottom right corner of this image is something that looks kind of like a galaxy. Here's a close-up. 
If you know what this is, please feel free to comment. I'd love to know. And here's one more night shot with the Milky Way more on the left and some nice light on all those green trees. Here's that same view the next morning. We're living in the clouds. But look at this, this is pretty cool. All these insects in the night came here onto the, uh, all over the building. There's another one up here. Oh, that's my wife. I think they're attracted to the lights. It's amazing how they look just like a leaf. Even has all the veins that a leaf has. It's crazy. <gasps> Return to the forest, my friend. <laughs> you laying it back there in that tree. That's cool. That green Katie did, the bug that just flew away, wasn't the only insect on the deck. I found this large praying mantis and decided to get some shots. You'll notice I'm not holding this one. Yeah, I don't think that would have been a really good idea. Look at the prongs on this thing's arms. I bet this bug was waiting to feed on those katydids. But it was nice enough to pose for a few pics, and then it waved goodbye. How nice. When you're here, you're basically in the morning, you're in the clouds. So the quality of light is really bad. So taking photographs of birds is going to be very difficult. But... I think I can do it if I just drop my shutter speed to like one one hundredth of a second. But that's going to make it really hard being handheld. But here I'm going to walk down this trail and show you what it looks like here early in the morning. And then see if I can get some pictures because there's little teeny birds bouncing around all over the place. Alright, check out this trail. This is the actual road that comes up to the mountain where we are. But look at the fog. You're actually in the clouds up here. So like I said, lighting is difficult but check it out it's so cool and this thick canopy of trees and there's been little birds just all over the place real active because it's early in the morning and the first bird I found was this cute little tufted titmouse don't ask me why they named this bird a tufted titmouse but they did some bird names are quite humorous, especially if you're a little immature like myself. Then I found these two little warblers. The first is a male black-throated green warbler. I had just a second or two to capture this shot. Notice the shutter speed is only one one hundredth of a second. That gave me enough light on this little bird to get a, a good capture, but if the bird moved too much, it would become blurry. So I was able to capture this just really quickly before it flew away. This other cute little bird showed up next. I think this is a female black pole warbler, but I'm not 100% certain. If you know, please feel free to leave a comment and let me know. I managed to get quite a few decent shots of this little bird, so there are plenty of different angles to get an ID on the species. I really like this last shot. With an aperture of only f5.6, the depth of field was very shallow, so only the bird's face was in focus. It gives the photo more of a kind of an artistic vibe. And then I managed this nice shot of an eastern kingbird. This was the first time I had ever seen one of these birds. This little area of woods was just full of birds and they were all busy catching some breakfast. On my way back to the cabin, I decided to grab a few landscape shots so I could show you what it looked like with all the fog in the trees. These shots were both taken with the Nikon D810. I've always liked taking pictures of roads and paths like this. I found a lot of really interesting things worth photographing on the way back. This fuzzy little caterpillar caught my eye and I used a shallow depth of field to help focus on its face. I shot this with the D810 and a Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens. Then I found some cool looking mushrooms and these shots were both taken with the D500 and the 200 to 500. Just more proof that this camera lens combo is extremely versatile. Then I spotted this really crazy looking green iridescent bug. I shot this with the D500 and the 200 to 500 as well. And after that, I found this large, very scary looking spider. And I wanted to get a little closer, so I used the Tamron 90 millimeter macro with the D500 to get these last two creepy shots of this hairy spider. Hey, come here. Come on, I'll show you something really cool. Come here. 
we were hiking out here through this uh, on the mountain and we came up to this little stream and it's full of all kinds of really cool life, especially these little teeny salamanders. Look, there's one right here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but he's laying right here in the bottom. Look, he's tiny. Do you see him swimming? Look, there's two of them actually right there. Look. You can see them just barely. They're like little teeny tiny minnows oh, down in the bottom of this pool. But there's a bunch of them all in this creek. In order to get nice and close, I put my Tamron 90 millimeter macro lens on the D500 and got down in the creek bed to uncover some great photo opportunities. My first subject was this tiny, almost translucent crawfish. This creature was about half an inch long or 1.5 centimeters. Then I found my first baby salamander. This is the northern dusky salamander. The Tamron 90 millimeter macro allowed me to get some great photos of these very camouflaged amphibians. The second shot is my favorite. Can you see the salamander poking its head up from the mud? It's on the left side. Look how well this little creature blends in. Even the small spots on the salamander's back look like the hundreds of tiny little stones in the creek bed. And then one more shot of one curled up on a leaf. These little babies were only a couple of inches long or five centimeters. Time to see if I can find an adult salamander. We found the adult salamanders. Can you hold that for a minute? And they're quite large compared to those little ones. Can you see them? Look how big he is. See his head and my finger, look. It's quite slippery. There he goes. There he goes. So you can see him in a, compared to a person. Look how big they are. Isn't that awesome? Salamanders. Big ones and little ones. All right, I'm in North Carolina still at a place called Catalucci. And this is the view, but somewhere down there, far down that way somewhere, there's supposed to be a whole bunch of elk. So we're gonna go see if we can find some of them. There's, right over there in the shadows is a big bull elk right there. I don't know if it's, you can see him in this video or not, but I'm gonna grab some pictures. It's really cool looking. He's coming right into good light. I got an excellent shot of this large bull elk as he made his way through the golden colored grass. The 200 to 500 let me get pretty close while staying in my truck. I love the overall look of this image. It has that feel to it that's more of a fall feel with the softer colors. And you can see that bluish haze in the background. Here's a closer shot of the same bull. One of his antlers is broken and in the second shot, you can really see that broken antler. And check out his collar. It looks just like a Nikon D800 camera strap. It uses the same color and the same font. That's kind of strange. So who's taking a picture of who here? I really wanted to capture the sound of this large uh, bull bugling for a female. My son was able to capture the impressive sound while I continued to take pictures. Here, check this out. I spotted another large male elk further back in the woods. I grabbed this shot and then I zoomed in for a closer look. I had to keep my shutter speed a little slow in order to get enough light in the thick cover of these trees. It didn't help much that the sun was very close to setting either. I traveled a little further into the valley and found this big guy standing guard over his harem of females. These bull elk are huge and you don't want to get in their way. A full-size bull like this can weigh as much as 700 pounds or 315 kilos. That's a lot of weight behind an impressive array of sharp antlers. Another bull across the field was challenging him and I thought a fight might happen, but the larger bull herded his females away and left me with my favorite shot of the day of this elk. This remaining male was so close that I didn't even have to zoom in. This was shot at the minimum focal length from the safety of my car. What an amazing creature. What else can we find? Let's go get some cool pictures of waterfalls. All of these waterfall shots were shot with the D810. I used two different lenses to capture these, and I went for the long shutter speed to get that misty look. I used my Nikon 20mm and my Sigma 50mm art lens. In order to get that misty look, you have to use a long shutter speed. In order to get a long shutter speed, you have to use a neutral density filter. You could think of this as sunglasses for your camera. 
it reduces the amount of light coming into the camera and lets you shoot with a long shutter speed. The camera captures all of that moving water while the shutter is open and you get this really cool misty look to the moving water. I love taking these types of photos and my favorite of the group is this last shot. I really like the contrast here. You have the bright sun coming in from the top which gradually gets dim until you see the waterfall. The reflection of the sun and the water creates this oil painting look and then you have the darkness framing both sides of the picture. This helps direct or push your eye towards that misty waterfall in the center. I'm going to leave this video with a view of the sunset on my last day in the mountains. Thanks for coming along with me. I had a great time. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button. Feel free to share the video. And as always, post a comment and let me know what you think. I always enjoy seeing what everyone has to say. And a very special thanks to my brother Mark for not only being an excellent tour guide while we were in the mountains, but also for the incredible accommodations. Thanks, man.